So what do you do if you want a top that fits in the chest, but not in the belly? Nah, I mean for all y'all big chested girls. That's for them big chest having girls. Obviously not me. But I am Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. And that means all of us, even y'all big chested girls. Some t-shirts to do, so. This is my sister Lisa. Show her some love in the comments for being a great sport about being our first plus size model. Let me show this, see the other one. She's a plain, plain, plain blue. Tea. Okay. And so we're looking for one if you want, like we said, if you want it fit it at the top in the chest area, but not in the belly area. What my mom calls your uchi. Uchi. My mom defines this as your lower belly fat. As in, oh, I really need to do something about this uchi. If you don't want it tight on your uchi. All right. That's big. Up. Yeah. Um. This is my other sister. Hello. It's Andrea. Here's a socks one, but she's not a socks fan. She's a Cubs fan. So. Oh well. Oh well. Hey now. <laughs> I actually like this. Okay. Action. What you think? I like that. So this is like this because it's because of the gather at the bottom. Uh huh. I don't, you know, but I like the V neck of it, the style of it. But down here, I already know one the shortness of it, and then how gathered it is at the bottom is gonna not fit me right down here. Yeah. But if it was somehow opened or like maybe maybe like that much. Maybe fit, so that might be a good okay. Okay, so today I want to know what body features make it hard for you to find clothes, whether it's retail or thrift. Let me know in the comments so we can address all body types. Okay, I know I'm supposed to be shopping for my sister, but what y'all think about that? It's cute, huh? Look what I found. I hate this music in the background. They're gonna shut my channel down for having it in the background. Does it make a lot of noise? <laughs> Look at, this. <laughs> Look at this with the buttons and the patches. It's like a light, I don't know, almost like denim, but it's not denim. But it's, and it has the flap in the back for booties. Nice. It's $10.99, but it's still nice. And it's going home with me, even though I'm here for her. <laughs> Okay, so this is a switch because they're in the dressing room, but I'm not. I'm just waiting um, for them to try on stuff. Put skirt on, can't tell, <laughs> but either way it goes. Okay, so if you don't want the t-shirt fitted around your stomach. Around here, just yeah. a little loose. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'll probably just loose it because it's slightly too close to my throat. Okay. Okay, like so top fits. look at this top. Throat. All my homies from the streets. <laughs> But yeah, that one fits better at the top. But this is like classic of why we're doing this project. Right. Because it fits amazing at the top, but you don't necessarily want it to fit you like don't that. Have a flat stomach as of yet. Yes, yes. You're still working on it. Sure. <laughs> we're working on it. Let's just say. Let's just, let's just say theory. We're working on it. But yeah, so that you can have clothes that fit the way you want them right. to. FYI, my sister has been dealing with a skin condition called hydrotonitis supertiva for like 20 years where she gets boils in very inconvenient places. And she's gone to a ton of doctors without results. So she finally found some people talking about it here on YouTube. And because of what she's been through, all she's been through, I put some links in the description box for anybody who thinks they might be dealing with this and haven't been able to get a diagnosis. But now she realizes that she needs to give up yeast. And she just started her journey this year. So sister, I just wanted you to know that me and the whole Blueprint DIY community got your back. <laughs> And this, that I want people to see the division, you know. <laughs> yeah. And it just kind of comes here, and it's a little bit, and then just goes straight. Right. So this might be a good one for just the opening. Okay. All right, let's get this DIY party started. Okay, so we're gonna give you four simple solutions using these two t-shirts and two sweaters. Let's start with this t-shirt. 
For this one, she said she wanted some relief in the neck and also a little at the bottom. So we're just gonna use scissors for this one. I'm gonna cut a V at the neck by first laying the shirt so that it's in half. You can just cut a straight V, but sometimes I like to cut perpendicular to the collar first and then cut the V. Now that that's done, I'll lay the shirt out flat. Along one side, I'm gonna use pins to mark off a half V. I don't have a ruler, so I'll just use this box. Then I'll just cut strips straight across the shirt towards the pins. I'm cutting 3 quarter inch strips, but you can cut them smaller if you like. Please use very sharp scissors or a rotary cutter for this, because dull scissors will make the edges look bad. Now open it up and stretch it so that the t-shirt material rolls a bit. I've done this on the back of t-shirts before just for design purposes, but I think it's a great solution for letting the bottom of a shirt out a bit. And she'll model all of them at the end, of course. Now for the next one, we're gonna add some details, but it's still a no sew project, so yay for that. I'm gonna use some large eyelets and some shoestrings that I purchased at Walmart. Lay the shirt in half and cut it up the sides however much you like. Then fold the sides under to create a V. Okay, so now's the time to be transparent about my failures. I didn't realize that with this stretching material, adding eyelets to a garment that will be pulling and stretching is not a good idea, unless you add some reinforcement between the two layers. So it could be interfacing or a lightweight heat and bond or anything that's gonna resist the stretch. And you'll definitely see why at the end. But let me show you the right way to do it. So I have this perfect top for any crafter that I thrifted just for this project. I'm gonna do the same thing and cut it up the sides and fold it under. I'm gonna add strips of interfacing between the fold and then iron it down. And yes, I know my iron isn't plugged in. I'm gonna run upstairs and use the good one. This is the cheap one I keep for guests. Sorry, family. <laughs> so here it is. It would definitely look better with black interfacing. I wonder if they have black interfacing. You know what? Let's just call the expert. Hello? Hey, do they make do they make black interfacing? Yes, ma'am. They make it gray too. Oh, okay, cool. Uh-huh. All right, that's all I need to know. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. As you can see, the interfacing adheres only to one side, which is why it may be better to use a lightweight heating bond. Next, I'll line up my eyelets where I want them to be and make a little mark in the middle. Then you'll want to cut a circle hole where you mark. On this stretchy fabric, do not cut an X mark like this, because if there is any pulling at the eyelets, the t-shirt will begin to rip. So, cut it in a circle and add your eyelets to the hole. Then you can use the hammer and die tool that comes in the kit to secure the eyelets. At the top holes where the most stretching will happen, I even added a small piece of leather to the back to be absolutely certain that the eyelet will stay secure. Then you can add a shoelace and lace it through however you like. I also tie a knot at the end so my string will stay where I want it. Okay, next up, did you know that if you have a chunky knit sweater, you can probably open it up on the side without it unraveling? Most sweaters are secured together down the side with a separate matching thread. So that means if you pull apart the seam and seam rip just that thread, then you can open your sweater up on the side without any sewing. And then if you do end up with any loose threads, just tie them in a knot and cut the excess. Well, what about a tightly woven sweater? Why not try cutting it up the side and adding a tight zigzag stitch to the edge? If you stretch the material as you sew, it'll create a really nice lettuce edge. And don't forget to cut the excess fabric that's past the zigzag stitch. If you have a serger, you can make the edges look even cleaner. Now lastly, I think I'm gonna go back to that white sweater and add a zipper. So I'll just pin the zipper down with each edge along the zipper. Pinning it is really important to keep it from stretching out of place as you sew. Then use the zipper foot to sew it down. So here it is. I really think this one is her favorite because we saw a similar one online that she really wanted. You could add zippers on both sides or leave the zippers out altogether for an easy no sew approach. And then if you wanted to open up a tightly woven sweater, you can add that zigzag stitch or serge it for a really cute lettuce edge effect. And then, to give a little bit more room in a t-shirt, you can add these simple details to the sides. And the deeper you make your V, the more it'll open up. And last but not least, I think this one came out super cute, and I really like these checkered shoelaces we found at Walmart. The only problem is that the shirt is pulling away from the eyelids, but don't worry, my mom says she's gonna fix it. 
When done correctly, you won't experience any pulling or ripping. Now, obviously, I can't test this properly or even do this top justice because I can't fill it out. So, I'll put on one that looks good on me. And now, what should I do with this one? Hmm. How about we give it away to one of you craftaholics who can do it justice. It's a double XL, so if you want it, just make sure you subscribe to my channel and leave a comment telling everyone what your latest craft or upcycling project is. And I'll choose a winner at random. This definitely won't be our last plus size project, so subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.